with so many podcasts out there, shows can get lost in the shuffle. That's why we implore you to check out Too Many Captains. You can find us at a moviepodcast.com. Five unique takes on Hollywood movies and culture. Find us on Twitter at It's a Film Podcast. Check our intellectual deep dives into theatrical films. Find us on Instagram at Too Many Captains Productions. Unique takes on soundtracks. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Too Many Captains Productions. Find us at a moviepodcast.com on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Play. And now, here comes a new episode of Collateral Cinema. It's Morbid Time on the Director's Cut as Ash and Bo sit down to review the cinematic masterpiece, the movie of all time, the god among cinematic gods, Morbius. So stick around, folks. The Morbid starts right now. Welcome to Collateral Cinema Morbin Time, the most morbid podcast around, where we talk about good morbing, bad morbing, and just morbing in general. We, we are totally coming from the same world that, Mo, that Morbius exists, and yes, my friends, it's Morbin Time! It's Morbin Time! Morbin Time! <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, Collateral Cinema Director's Cut back at you, and we are doing Morbius. I mean, we, we had to do this at some point, you know? Th- this movie just has such an interesting <laughs> story to it, and just the memes, man. We, we, we had to do this. Truly, one of the movies of all time. It is a movie. I mean, just that's the best you can say about this. It's a movie, right? It is a movie, and Jared La- Jared Leto is one of the actors of all time, an actor indeed, <laughs> truly an actor, truly a, an experience, truly a movie. All right, so I know that the the Morbius memes have died down a little bit, but we decided to just end it all with a bang. We had to talk about it. It had to be discussed. It fairly recently came out on digital, so. Yeah, and uh, we watched it twice, actually. Yeah, we did. We got morbed twice. We got the full morbid experience. And I have to say that both times it was equally shitty, but, you know, equally as fun. Yeah. So, you know, it's funny. I'm watching this movie, and my parents went to go see it in theaters. I didn't see it until just recently. And I was doing the memes the whole time, and I hadn't even seen the fucking movie. <laughs> but my parents unironically liked this. Wow. And what's funny is they give me shit for, like, anime sometimes if I if I put that on, you know, when I would put that on in the living room or whatever. You know, they'd give me shit for it. And I'm like, this is a thousand times cringier. The dialogue, the writing, <laughs> the oh my, exposition. My lord, this, this actually makes weebdom look good. <laughs> in comparison to like Western comic book fans, yeah, and and apparently Jared Leto didn't use his normal method acting approach here, and I don't know, like at least the method acting made him stand out. What do you think he would have done to prepare for this role if he would have done full <laughs> method acting? Uh, get in a tank with bats. Oh, he totally would have done that, and <laughs> I, I don't know something I'm gonna say here. I'm I'm a little put off by how they portrayed bats in this movie. It's like every other movie, they're always seen as very evil, nasty, vicious creatures. But in real life, no, bats aren't like that, man. I mean, bats are actually kind of adorable. In Remember, these are vampire bats. Even vampire bats are pretty innocuous. I mean, they don't yeah. even actually suck blood. They just kind of lick you from a little nick that they put in you, you know? Yeah. It, it's it's practically like a mosquito bite. Just Just, you know, an actual flying mammals doing it well and, and the premise of morbius is that he's a living vampire he is and the story in the comics is the same as in the movie he was a you know 
scientist who suffers from a rare genetic blood condition. He uh, is, is or a rare blood condition. I don't remember if it's genetic or not, but it, it's at least degenerative. Yeah, but he has a rare a rare blood condition that he's trying to solve uh, to to yeah to uh, what's the word to cure through his research, and he ends up acquiring pseudo vampiric abilities, and so he is a he is a living vampire, and he's a vampire by science fiction means, not through supernatural means, which was you know kind of the premise of the whole character. He's not a particularly well known villain. But he, he is a member of Spider-Man's rogues gallery. Uh, he is, you know, like Venom and, and like as portrayed in this movie, sometimes an anti-hero. But what was so weird about this premise from the get-go as a movie is this character has never been portrayed on screen. Now, with Tom Hardy's Venom, it kind of works. I mean, it, it still would have been better to introduce him as a villain, but it kind of works to just go ahead and have him have his own spinoff movie because he's already had an on-screen you know, uh, 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 an on-screen portrayal, portrayal, yeah, with Topher Grace in Spider-Man Three. So that kind of worked, and he's a very popular character. People were well aware of Venom. He he is the epitome of eighty Spider-Man. Morbius is not somebody most casual fans are going to know about, and he has never been depicted on screen. So why are we doing a spinoff movie about Morbius when he hasn't even been featured as a villain yet in any universe? It's weird what Sony's been trying to do, and it's like they have the rights to Spider-Man, yet they're refusing to use Spider-Man, and this movie omits all mission to Spider-Man that hap- that was in the trailers and, and the promotional work, uh, save for the, the credit scene. Yeah. I mean, I, obviously it was contractual obligations that made them do this. More than more than more or less. Well, and Sony I planned mean, out this whole thing. They're still doing Craven. Another thing that doesn't make sense. Now, Craven is somebody that you know um, that is that is very popular, but mainly among comic book fans. Again, he hasn't had a portrayal in live action. So to me, it's weird that Sony is is they're trying really hard to do the Sinister Six thing, and they're stopping you know at no end to achieve it by introducing characters in their own solo films. But the thing with Morbius is that was I was excusable. If the, the, we were still optimistic, I remember there was still some hype around this movie just prior to it coming out. Maybe about a month to a few weeks before people realized it was gonna suck. But <laughs> and I remember people realized it was gonna suck before it came out. But there was a good period of time, you know, between all the delays, where for some reason, despite the reputation. People were 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 excited about it, and like I don't hate the Venom movies. I think Tom Hardy's Venom is actually great casting. I just think, you know, and I don't, and and I I can see the argument why you know those movies don't seem to be as well written. But I personally enjoy them. I think they're decent. But still, given that reputation, you know, I don't know what people expected. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the other side of the whole Sony thing is that they kind of saw what uh, Marvel initially did, like with the beginning of the MCU by bringing mm-hmm. a, a B-list tier, tier uh, character like uh, Iron Man but to, the, to the something. forefront. I mean, I, I can see how they just kind of saw that. They were just like, hey, we can do that, but let's do some of the secondary characters and do the Sinister Six thing, well, which, which of course, you know, the latest Spider-Man movie did that better, you know? Well, and Iron like, Man is Iron Man is a superhero. He may have been a B-list superhero, but he was a known superhero. You know, a casual uh, comic book or superhero fan knows who Iron Man is. Iron, you know, even prior to the movie coming out. He was always known. He had his own comic book line. Has Morbius at some time had his own comic? Probably, but... Yeah, well, I mean, if you recall, I mean, there's some allusions to the 90s Morbius run here, like especially with the color scheme and the credit sequences and everything. So, I mean, they have at least some familiarity with the character, but I mean, yeah, like me myself, like I was just like, who? When, when I heard that this movie was coming out, I was like, you know, it's funny. What? He's uh, Dr. Michael Morbius is in the Spider-Man PS4 game, but prior to the vampirism, oh, you know, okay. he's just portrayed as a civilian character. But there's the name drop. So somebody who's aware of the comics, and they're probably setting it up for a sequel. 
I don't know how they're going to go with it after we've already had this portrayal. They're probably just get, just get Leto to do it. Just get <laughs> Leto to get in the, into the booth. That's that's all they need to do. Seriously. No, no, no. I think that Sony actually has an opportunity on their hands now, though. Given the hype around this movie, take this project and just go balls to the wall with it. Do something goofy that doesn't make any sense at all, you know, and, and just go crazy with it. And you could actually have something really fun because let me tell you here. You know, this movie is actually a blast. I mean, we're shitting on it, but it's entertaining. It, it, it has a so bad it's good quality. I mean, we were watching the Angry Joe review on it, and they and they were really trying to refute that hardcore. They was just like, no, this is like total dreck. And I'm like, yeah, I agree. It's dreck. I mean, there, there's just there's so much that's generic about this. It's a different kind but, of so bad it's good. I guess yeah. it's not like you know, say the room where it's like you know, the, it's just completely incoherent. It makes no sense. Yeah, but there Th was is, there was earnesty behind the room. This almost everything. has the opposite problem. It's a yeah. very by the book story. It's completely forgettable. I mean, it, it feels very generic. And what's funny is it doesn't even. I say that you know, here's a superhero film that look that feels super generic but it doesn't feel like a superhero film it you know i don't know i mean maybe i'm just comparing it to other gothic vampire stories but it it, it feels like a watered down underworld very much or, so i yeah. mean it, it kind of exists in the same same realm as blade except blade was actually kind or, of or he, here's decent. what it is here's what it is it's a slightly better blood rain <laughs> 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 yeah but i mean Everything about this movie, like especially the the color grading, like they they just go with that blue green color grading that is like obvious. It, it feels like an allusion to Underworld or The Matrix, you know, kind of a. It's almost like this weird combination of the two color grades, you know. It's like green tint with a little bit of blue tint here and there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it really doesn't have a whole lot of color in this movie. It's very drab, actually. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, it's very uninteresting. Uh, the visual effects also are, they're just there, you know? I, yeah. I, I like, I'm not going to go out and say that they're bad, but, you know, like, I don't know. I don't like the whole, like, like the whole echolocation visual effect just didn't work for me. They could have done that well. Like, go, go back to the Daredevil movie, and, and they had something similar with his uh, ability with his blindness, in a way. Right. Or, or, or like uh, going to uh, the Dark Knight when he had the uh, the spy uh, thing, you know, it's like they, they had, that had an effect to it that was done better than this. You know, and they could have done a good effect there. And what's funny is for the life of me, even though I've watched this twice, I really can't remember the action scenes very well. I, all I remember is that Jared Leto morbed all over, over he, he, everybody. It was morbid time. He had to morb. Yeah, man. My favorite scene is when he says it's morbid time. It's and the greatest. And he goes and he morbs over. It is truly a scene. <laughs> it is a scene in a movie. <laughs> That's what's funny, fun about this movie is you can sit there and just have fun with it and make fun of it and be like, look, he's morbid all over everybody. It is actually an easy movie to riff on, and I almost want to do a special commentary episode on it because <laughs> it is just so much fun to riff on. It's like I, I would love to see like an MST3K episode on this. Yes. It would be immaculate. But you know, like like as far as like the 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 uh, the choreography goes, you know, and 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 the fight scenes, it it's all obscured it's, by that visual effect, that weird smoky vapory effect. Well, and they also you know just kind of mostly show Morbius going around as like a blur everywhere, and then they do the Matrix shit, which worked in the Matrix because back then it was still sort of novel. It doesn't work here because it's been so overdone that if you're going to do bullet time, do something interesting with it. Like, for instance, in the X-Men films, you know, in the more recent ones with with the younger cast, with Quicksilver, with uh, my ad. Uh, uh, yeah. Not Aaron Taylor Johnson, who's going to play Craven, but the other one that played him. Yeah. Uh, uh, Evan Peters. He uh, like that was actually done a little bit better. I like those scenes where everything runs in slow motion and, and, and they did some interesting things with that. But this is just very by the numbers. It's like it's just action movie 101. <laughs> well, also, there's just the fact that the pacing is just so all over the place here. You yeah. know, I mean, 
especially since a lot of that pacing is moved forward strictly by exposition. Like, like oh there were, God, the first 15 minutes of the movie are all exposition. Oh, it's, it's so excruciating. And it's, it's literally just like people telling Morbius what he's done with his life up to that point. It's like, shouldn't he know all this shit? He's just like, yeah, I know I did all of this. And you know, what's her face? <laughs> Generic. Here, smart girl heroine. Well, she, she's that, that. That's an actual character from the comics and Bancroft, right? Or Martine Bancroft. Martine, yeah, right? yeah. She's a character from the comics, which it, it's funny because the character that's a completely original character who we will get to, <laughs> yeah, is, is a much better character and 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 has a much more compelling dynamic with uh with Doctor Michael Morbius. But you know, and, and in this movie, it, it feels, she's just talking to Jared Leto the entire time, and she's just like, and Doctor Michael Morbius at age fifteen, you graduated college, and then at age twenty, you had dedicated your life to research, and and were on your way to winning the Nobel Prize, and at, she's just explaining his at, whole at, life at story. Doctor Morbius at age twenty eight, you finally lost your virginity. <laughs> it was a very very awkward affair. As you recall, <laughs> it's, it's like, can, can you imagine her just like going down a list, just describing his life up to that point? That's what it felt like. <laughs> and it's like, she's why, why isn't he explaining this? I mean, he's the one that did it, at least as exposition. That would make a little bit more sense yeah, it would, if he was explaining it to her. But I guess maybe they didn't want him to mansplain or something. I don't know. I, I don't really get it, you know. And, and I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna fucking say, you know, that that other character that we're gonna talk about here in a little bit, it made for a better romantic lead than fucking you know, Martin <laughs> Bagroff. Like way better. Way it's better. It's like this should this should totally have been a gay romance. But hey, you know, all the all the twi- all the film Twitter idiots, the, the 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 ones that that we don't like. We we like most all of film Twitter, honestly. But you know the ones. It's mm. like those guys will be like, it got political. And we've been like, ah, whatever. Ah. Ah. It's like, I'm surprised they're not fucking bitching about that anyways, because the subtext is there. Yeah. So I don't know why she was even in the movie, to be honest with you. She doesn't really serve a purpose other than exposition, which could have been filled by oh, anything. Oh, she, she's got she's got to be the, the momentary damsel in distress. She's yeah. got to be that for a second. You know, yeah, and it's just like there's just no place. She just feels out of place in the in this movie. It doesn't work. No part of the chemistry between her actor and Jared Leto feels compelling or no, genuine. N- none of it. I mean, let's go to that diner scene after he shows up in the bus after she. Uh, Adria Arjona. Adria Arjona. Okay. Okay. Um, let, let, let's she's go, let's go. fine as an actress. But I know she, no lack of skill on her part, I would say, but she also doesn't do anything to stand out in the performance. Well, and there, when there is another character actor who does do that, despite, you know, <laughs> but there's that one diner scene, you know, which why, yeah, real subtle with the whole lighting thing, you know, like Borbius is in the shadows and the darkness and she's in the light and everything. Yeah. Very, very subtle guys. <laughs> but it's like, even in that scene, it's like, what is she there for? What is that scene there for? That doesn't build anything between these characters. No, it doesn't. And, you know, it's funny is apparently she was her, uh, or at least the actress said that the character, you know, or which, that in her portrayal, she took inspiration from AOC, but I don't see it. I don't see it either. It's like, I mean, first of all, why? You know, I mean, I, 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 I think AOC is, I think Alexandra Ocasio Cortez. Let's go ahead and say her full name. I mean, let's give her some respect. Uh, Miss Cortez is like, I think she's fine as an activist. Don't know what she's like as a politician. She's honestly. hot. Oh yeah, I mean, and and, and Benny Shap wants her feet. I guess. <laughs> oh, old Benny Shap, hypothetically. And I want to see her tits. Oh my god, dude, dude, she she she's gonna hear this one day, and, she, and she's just gonna be. She's going to shake her head in disappointment. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. You're going to make Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez shake her head at us. That's cool. <laughs> she probably looks hot when she's mad, too. Oh, my God. Don't go full Benny Shapiro on us, please. <laughs> well, you see. <laughs> oh, my God. Let, let's say hypo- hypothetically. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, my God. I'd much rather just be Mormon. Has, has he said something about this movie? 
We forgot to see if Ben oh, Shapiro no, did yeah, a we need movie. To watch, we, we need oh. to look for the Benny Shap. Oh no, the, his his uh, the Batman review is one of the funniest things I've ever fucking seen. Oh, period. he completely missed the point of that movie. Oh, it was he's so glib about movies. It's like no wonder he didn't make it in Hollywood. For the sake of argument, <laughs> let's say Alexandria <laughs> sent sent me her her toes, her her little piggies. <laughs> Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Off the rails. Off the rails. On the Morbin edition of Collateral Cinema Director's Cut. On the Morbin, Morbin, Mor- Morbius with all the more bussy or whatever. More the, bussy. Whatever the kids call it these days. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. But anyway, whoops. Anyway, I mean, going back to just like this this character, like she's just not utilized in any meaningful way other than near the end when she, spoiler alert, I don't give a fuck about spoilers for this. This has been out for a while. No, it's like, we're not going to fucking worry about spoiling Morbius people. We're not going to worry about it. But yeah, like like near, near the end, it's like her eyes open and she's all, and now she's the undead vampire character that she was in the comics. I mean, I guess they were going to do something with that, but... Like, there's no build up to any of that. That's not earned, people. No, and you know, I did it, it just felt very contrived to me. And yeah, what's funny is that actually happened to the character in the comics, but I don't know, it could have been done better. It could have, could have saved it for another. Well, we knew this movie wasn't getting a sequel, but we're also talking th- about a hypothetical good version of this. I hate to say it. And I don't want to fucking make it sound like I'm trying to like marginalize a female actress or anything, but if they would have just dialed that sh- dialed her back a little bit and then saved her for a potential sequel for that angle and actually built up to it in a more m- organic manner, like she probably could have been utilized well just right. over the span of two movies. Well, and they could have slowly built up to that. This film puts a particular emphasis on another dynamic, one that is inarguably better done and that is the dynamic between morbius and milo Milo. matt smith matt smith carries this film so 100 percent. i am a huge fan of his i love his portrayal as the 11th doctor um probably my like second favorite doctor next to david Tennant's version of the character but um and i gotta say everything i've ever seen matt smith in he just he just he just takes the spotlight. He brightens the room. It's funny how so much of the writing in this movie, so much of the dialogue they write for these characters is bad, but not a single line uttered from Matt Smith's mouth feels out of place. It doesn't. It's almost like they specifically made this movie for him. <laughs> it's like, why wasn't... They could have made him Morbius. Make Morbius British. I'm, I don't know. He could have been Morbius. Well, what's funny is he technically, he technically plays an... Uh, a uh, an original character for the film, yeah. Because uh, initially he had been announced to play Loxius Crown or or Hunger. Huh. I don't know much about you know Morbius or or that, or that run or you know the his y- yeah adventures with Spider Man. I haven't even really read that many comics, but yeah, originally he was going to be a comic character, but then they ended up turning him into uh, actually somebody who's more like. Emil Nikos, yeah, who, who is yeah. his best friend in the comics. Actually, pretty much that exact same character. They changed the name, and then Emil Nikos is now Emil Nicholas, and he is the the mentor slash father figure. Yeah, which that, is that's, weird. But. Yeah, that that's another thing that's very strange about this movie is that the whole dynamic between Milo and Morbius and this father figure. It's like they, for some reason, out of nowhere, when Milo turns vampire, like. He, he just lashes out at this guy, and it's like, well, where is this all coming from? Well, it's and like it's if you, if you sort go- of foreshadowed. I mean, they have that scene as them as kids that we randomly jump back to to try to set up this relationship, and then, you know, and then we immediately jump back to the present. But, um, you know, you have this scene where you see him lashing out uh, at, at bullies, but I don't know. They never really go... No, into it they, they never really call back to it it's like yeah they're trying to establish that there's this you know dark side to milo's character that he has aggressive tendencies and that he can 
I mean, but but it's like, where does the kind of weird, almost Machiavellian thing come from? You know, it's like, where's that coming from? It, it I mean, it's like he just completely turns the moment that uh, Morbius actually goes through with the with the procedure that and, he goes through and becomes what he is. And he turns off screen, and it's it's. I mean, as a reveal, I can see where they were trying to go with that. Like, I a, think oh, that he was, was doing it the whole time, but at least show a flashback of him injecting himself or, or something. Or even just a slight little flashback of him ganking one of the vials of the fucking serum. as superhuman. But there's a cost. Yeah, I face a choice. Hunt. And consume blood. Or die. Ruin it once it's within us. It's up to us to control it. What if I can't? Michael Morbius. You've been given a gift. Exactly. I can let go of what you used to be. Discover who you're meant to be. All our lives we've lived with death. Why shouldn't they know what it feels like for a change? Just accept who you are. The bad guy. Morbius. Holy water? Real. Yeah. You ever see Lost Boys? Story of my life. A new Marvel legend arrives exclusively in movie theaters April 1st. Yeah. At least a tiny little momentary, you know, callback that would have noticed that he may have shoved it into his pocket or something. Something that just very, very subtle, you know? Something. Something but no, like it's that. just, it's revealed that he already took the serum. Like, not only did he, did he have a plan to go against his friend's wishes his his surrogate brother but he already did it it's already been done we never saw it saw it we never will see it he's already a vampire and apparently and he's already done one killing yeah yeah that's right it, which is honestly i think the one scene in the entire movie that was actually done kind of well if playing on certain horror cliches right you know it was at least done well. I mean, it was actually a suspenseful scene, and, you know, it actually used some uh, horror tropes to full effect. Well, that's just because they copied it from some... <laughs> yeah, they, no, they outright copied it, yeah, pretty much from, like, Lights Out or something like that. Like, uh, like straight up. But it was it's at least a decent copy. Right. But also, who is this character that's being killed? It's like, we barely see her. Right. That's not and, even established that well when you think about it. And it's not even established why he killed her or what happened. I mean, I guess, you know, later on we put the pieces together, but I don't know, just y you got to I and I like the principle of show don't tell, but sometimes you have to tell a little bit or actually show. Yeah. You know, and and but I guess that the 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 character's, you know, just has this insatiable bloodlust. But it's just so jarring. Here's the problem with this movie. Uh -huh. It has lots of show and lots of tell and nothing connecting the two. That's, That's true. what it is. How does this movie... <laughs> That's, I don't know how they make that disconnect. I have no clue. Yeah. It, it's, it, it's almost... It's mind-boggling. Yeah, truly. I mean... And, and, and then, you know, once again, going back to that final fight, which, by the way, I couldn't see all, you know, like are hardly any of it. I, oh, yeah, I, it's all dark and it's all very fast. -paced. It's all dark and there's vapory stuff everywhere. It's like, uh, OK and everything. But I mean, 
then at the end, he brings those bats up. You know, it's like we still don't get an explanation for that either. Like, like let's go back to the to the beginning of the movie. It's like that's a very out of place scene that's easily forgotten in the movie, right? Yeah. And, but in no way does it really establish how he makes this connection with the bats, other than capturing them. Oh yeah, and I kind of was wondering about those. Like, when exactly does this take place? Because we have that opening, and then we have. And that's how the film opens, and there's an almost no context, and then and then there's 25 years ago showing them as kids, and then there's a bunch of exposition dump as adults, and yeah. it, it just feels very disconnected. And that whole first you know opening scene was actually I'd forgotten about it. Yeah, but it immediately raised questions the moment that you saw it, though. Right. Questions that still kind of carried throughout the movie. Yeah, that don't ever get answered. And and so it's like, what exactly is going on here? Because he doesn't have his powers, so he's not controlling the bats. But I don't know. <laughs> what I don't, was the purpose of that it's scene? It's never established. And, and it's like, how does he have control over these bats? Like, where where does he gain control of them? Like, he sends them all into a frenzy by showing his his bloodied palm, you know, his cut palm and we see a, a corpse that's like just completely uh, an animal corpse that's been completely sucked dry into bones and yet Which these, once again not how vampire bats work hundreds or thousands of bats all just like swarm around him and the other guys like what is going on here yeah can you stop contradicting yourself for five minutes i i don't know how else to really put it with that it's like how do you go from that to an orphanage years ago to current day? How and does then that, how does the that Matt happen? Smith dancing half naked. Oh, let's we have to talk about that scene. Have sex. We have to. It, this <laughs> so, is this is the bully McGuire scene of this generation. Yes, that's it, what is, it is. And I've seen edits of them put together. There's one in particular that's really well done, <laughs> where like emo Peter throws the fucking uh, the fucking jacket, you know, and then. Uh, and then Matt Smith catches it and puts it on, and you know, uh, Bully McGuire and Milo are are, are just in sync. It, it's really well done. It, I, I know what you're talking about. It, it's an one. amazing uh, edit. It really is. But that scene, in and of itself, that is enough to make this movie. This this is all build up for that scene. Okay, that is true peak cinema, Bo. That's why my ultimate theory is that this movie was made for Matt Smith, and he should have just been fucking Morbius. Like, yeah. seriously, this was made for Matt Smith because he he nails it the, so much. It's obvious that he's having a blast making this movie. You know, it's funny that that song actually is saying have sex, by the way. I looked it up and it, it's called uh, Exe, or Exe by uh, Off the Meds or something. It, it's all in Afrikaans and shit. It's like it's it's a it, it's all foreign except for the have sex part. Yeah, yeah, it, it, Afrikaans would make it like more roughly South African, which you know there there was a wave there has been a wave of music coming from South Africa as of late. But you know what that song is from 2 years ago. Yeah, which was probably around the time that that was being edited into the movie, I suppose. Yeah, what was all it, the delays. Was it Morbius kind of a, a initial uh, victim of uh, the COVID pandemic? Mhm. Mm it was. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It was initially when was it initially supposed to come out? Uh, at some point, it was supposed to come out in January this of Janu this year. Of this but year? I, I, I want to say at some point, it was also slated for a, at least a 2021 release, if it, not a 2020. It, it, had, it had to have been. I mean, I, I'm even kind of trying to look for references to 2020, 2021, uh, you know, culture. There. This movie like, was announced a long ass time ago. I remember that. It was. And, and along with the rest of uh, Sony's film projects, which may or may not come to light, I don't know. I I still want them to make them. If it's like this and it's hilarious, I want them to make it. They are moving ahead with Venom, so they and, may as they may as well just do it. And the Spider Verse shit acts is in its own category, and uh, Into the Spider Verse is a phenomenal film. It uh, is. Yeah. Whoever's whatever team is behind that. Have those guys write the rest of yes. whatever the fuck Sony's trying to do with Spider Man characters? Hire them. I mean, if if you could take uh, James Gunn, I mean, from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, and have him come and make a Suicide Squad movie, you should be able to get the writers from uh, in, from uh, Into the Spider Verse or whatever to do this shit. It's all or, Sony, so yeah. you know it shouldn't be difficult for them to do it. So well, yeah, I, that was a Lord and Miller movie too. That was directed by Lord and Miller, yeah. who you know. I mean, if you know anything about animation these days, they know their shit. 
you know? So they would be the ones to make an animated Spider-Man movie. So, okay, so they only work with animated, and that explains why they haven't been involved in anything the else. The one time that they tried to do live action, it was when uh, they were going to do the Han Solo movie. Okay. They were going to do Solo, but they didn't work out there, so... It might have been better. It would have been, but I mean, I heard that what they were what they were proposing was just too much, too radical for Disney. Oh, really? And everything. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it would have been interesting though. Would have been interesting to see. I, I want to see them helm an actual live action movie. It would but be really cool. You know what? Fuck it. Give Morbius two to Tommy Wiseau. Uh, yes, he would. He would know exactly what to do with the character because maybe Johnny Vampire. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, maybe Johnny Vampire. But anyway, I think that that's about as much as we can really say about this. I mean, we can maybe talk longer about it, but I mean, what else is there to say? <laughs> it, we, it, it has been morbid time on our show this entire time. We've been morbing everybody. Truly, truly a film review, Bo. It is, this is a film review from a movie podcast, 100%. And uh, this is what's going to send us. Yes, into it, into stardom. We're gonna make more billions and more billions of dollars. And get all the more bussy. All the more bussy. All the more bussy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, what's your final uh, thoughts on uh, Morbius? It's like, what what would you rate this movie? I would rate it as one of the movies of all time. The, the movie. The movie. It is the movie of all time. The movie of all time. It is, su it is such a movie that I don't know how much more movie it could be. Ironically, five out of five. Ironically, five out of five, but unironically. Unironically? <laughs> like a two, probably. <laughs> unironically, I give it more billions and more billions and more billions of ratings. Uh, more it is, billion it is out the, of ten. Yes, it is the most Morbius movie of all. It is truly a Morbin good time. It's a Morbin time. It's Morbin time. 100% Morbin time. time. Ah. Morbin, 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 Morbin. That's right. We're killing this meme. <laughs> we are killing this meme dies here. Straight up. This, this is like the Viking funeral for this meme right here. Yeah, this is this is the last. This is This is the end of it. We are definitely killing, and Morbius is not an undead vampire. He's a living vampire, so so you can you can kill him, like I guess. With, with with actual. Or if you kill him, memes. does he become undead? I don't know. That's probably know. been explored. I mean, maybe it has. I mean, once again, we don't know much about Morbius, you know. But yes, truly a movie. We still don't know much about Morbius. Well, I don't know anything about this. Even watching this movie, I don't know what the fuck Morbius is. Like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? I think a lot of people walked into this not even knowing it was a Marvel movie, much uh, less a superhero I'm, film. I would not be surprised by that. I mean, I honestly wouldn't, you know? Almost like, you know, you back in the day you went to see Steel, you know, that was uh, Shaquille O'Neal, and you probably didn't even know it was a Disney, not a Disney, a DC movie. It's like, yeah, it was a DC Comics movie. Oh. Yeah. So was Men in Black, right? Men in Black was, yeah, that was a comic book movie, but I don't think that was a Marvel or a DC or anything. I, I think, think that was, was related like, to DC. Wasn't it like Dark Horse Comics or something like probably. that? Probably. You're probably right. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Also, Tyrese Gibson is in this. Tyrese. <laughs> Tyrese Gibson. God damn. <laughs> they got Tyrese to play a character who in the comics is a white man. Yeah. Yeah, but he he's a cop here. Yeah, yeah, these cops in this movie, what the fuck is up with them? Okay, they, they're investing. Like, yeah, here, here we are. We're talking more about this movie when we were trying to wrap things up. It's like, what the fuck were up with those cops? We got to talk about the cops because one of my big gripes about the movie is how the fuck did they figure it out? They connected the dots in such a random way and they happened to be right. But how the fuck did you get there? They're yeah. like, yeah, uh, Dr. Michael Morbius, you... uh. You, you you have a rare genetic condition that you've been working on. You wouldn't happen to uh, be secretly conducting experiments on that boat where we saw evidence of an actual vampire, right? If I, if I would have been Morbius, I would have been like, how? How did you come up with that? What? Not only do they suspect him and question him, no, they put the cuffs on him right away because what? He looks a little bit better off than they were led to believe due to his condition? Yeah. I mean, maybe there could have been a reasonable explanation for that for all they knew. 
I mean, what what the fuck? It is such a stretch. And again, it happens to be right. I get it. It's like whenever you got the right the answer right in math, but you did all the work wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, what the fuck? How did you come to this? At least believably, you know, bring characters to the conclusion of the truth. I, I needed we needed to talk about that because that's that's probably one of the biggest ways that this movie just completely falls apart. And why did off why did Agent Rodrigo have an Alan Alda voice? I swear to God, he sounded exactly like Alan Alda from Mash, dude. <laughs> it was like, you know, it like like that really weird kind of uh, voice that he has. But y- yeah, the, the the cops in the cops in this movie are very weird. The situation with the cops is not resolved. He breaks out of prison. Or, and then you know they're, they're seen briefly near the end whenever the uh, he goes all morbid on the bats and everything. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, the, he morbs all over the city. He he morbs all over the city. The, the city gets morbed hardcore. <laughs> it's the most morbed city of all. It's like millions of lives were lost in the morbing. Millions. <laughs> we don't talk about it. We, we yeah we we don't talk about the morbing. No, we don't. <laughs> But anyway, okay, I guess all of our thoughts are finally said about this. My my rating, uh, unironically, is, I don't know, 2.5, whatever. Just just w- watch it for the memes, people. Mm-hmm. It's just one of those movies. You, you, you watch it for the memes. I mean, I don't even see how you could hate watch this, because I don't know how you could really hate this movie. You, I can see how you could maybe be bored by it, mm-hmm. but yeah. That that that's truly a morbid, morbid time, <laughs> truly. But anyway, Ash, what's happening with Collateral Gaming? Well, as of today, as of the time of recording, we uh, just did uh, recorded our episode on Fire Emblem: The Blazing Blade, or at least part one of it. It's going to be our season finale, and then we are done with season four of Collateral Gaming. Uh, we are starting back up in September. Super excited about that. Uh, we should also be releasing a video game recommendations episode out soon, which you are welcome to join for. I, I would love to join that. I'll get on my PS Classic and drag some games up to the uh, forefront. Hell yeah. yeah. Uh, we also just released a Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes game launch review, and uh, that was a lot of fun. It kind of timed that with the release of uh, our our episode on, on our first fire emblem game so excellent mm-hmm. right on now as for collateral cinema that's in our in the post season if you want to check out our previous season finale check out our episode on the chuck norris classic sidekicks from the 90s uh-huh. we, we went on a real 90s kick last season so if, if you're into that sort of thing yeah check it out uh, but we most recently did a full-length commentary for the movie Demonic Toys, the Full Moon Features classic, directed by Charles Band. Well, not directed by Charles Band; it's produced by him, but and written by him. Mm-hmm. But it, it 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 was a good time. We we had fun. Yeah, what can I say. And we will be reviewing Thor: Love and Thunder. Yes, we are going to be doing that. Um, I really wanted to go see it tomorrow, and it comes out, but. Uh, with the uh, finances and life it may not happen exactly as planned, but we are going to be releasing an episode on it. That should be the next thing to look forward to from us. Yes, definitely. And also very soon we are still slated to do our Mega Cowboy Bebop episode mm-hmm. with uh, the Retro Anime Podcast. Like we are going to get that episode done. Hell yeah. Yeah, exactly. And we are also going to have an episode with uh, with Geek Freaks. As well, it's like they're going to have us on. I mean, we're going to do some kind of uh, we're going to do a little interview and talk about our movies and the podcast and everything. And we're going to have, do a little top five uh, list or something like that. I haven't determined what it would be, but yeah, we're, we're going to it's probably going to be we're probably going to be recording it uh, early August. So, yeah. yeah, look for that. And, I mean, are there any other movies that we should review? Like, I mean, didn't you want to do a Cronenberg movie, uh, Crime of, Crimes of the Future? Yeah, I was talking about it because, you know, that could have been our At the Movies episode for last month. Well, he- here's what it is. You need to watch more Cronenberg movies. So he- he- here's my proposal. We'll do a- another Director's Cut episode where we review a couple of his old horror movies. All right, that works for me. Yeah, ma- maybe like... Uh, uh, Maybe we'll do shivers and scanners or something like that. 
All right. But yeah, yeah any, any new like uh, movies that are coming out? I mean, that would have been a perfect uh, at the movies episode. I am really excited about Thor, though. I love Ragnarok. It's one of my favorite MCU films. And uh, I, I have high hopes for Taika Waititi's second. He parade. supposedly he says that it's better than Ragnarok. That's what he so says. He, he's hyping it up hardcore. Uh, so you know, yeah, yeah. Anywho, I uh, when it comes to collateral cinema, we're going to be coming back in October. I believe our first episode is going to be the Human Centipede. So that's going to be fun. We're going to have all kinds of people on that episode. So look for that, and. You can find Collateral Cinema on Spotify, Podbean, Google Play, or Google Podcasts, I guess it's called now. I mean, we're on Apple Podcasts, we're on YouTube, we're on iHeartRadio, we're pretty much wherever you get your podcasts. We're we're constantly trying to find new platforms to join and everything, like we even have some platforms hitting us up to start a page and everything, so look for us there, like places like Picolink or Lalo or whatever. And also look for us on Good Pods. It's like rate, rate and review us, follow us there, listen to our episodes there, and help us climb the charts there. We've charted a few times, you know, y- even though I admit I haven't really been doing a lot of activity on Good, good Pods, but people still listen to us there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, check us out there. And you can find both Collateral Cinema and Collateral Gaming on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and on Patreon, where for us you can find full length feature commentaries in two tiers starting at one dollar. You can just follow the show and you can help us help support us. And we you could have five dollars, which will give you actual uh, access to our commentaries. And we will also give you a shout out on the on an episode of the podcast. So yeah, check us out there. And same with the collateral gaming. You have like a full on Let's Plays, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, nice. that's what we do with our Patreon content. Awesome. Yeah, so check uh, collateral gaming there. And I guess with that said, the Morbin time has commenced and it has ended. We are concluding the Morbin, everybody. We got all the more bussy. We have all the more billions. <laughs> and yes, it's Morbin time. That's right. So, so I've been a method actor, Jared Leto, portraying Ashley Chancellor. And I've been Doctor Who actor, Matt Smith, portraying Bo Maddox. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and this was Collateral Cinema. And yeah, fuck the fucking Supreme Court. Fuck the Supreme Court. Laters. Cinema is a collateral media podcast. All music and movie clips are owned by the respective creators and are used for educational purposes only. Please don't sue us. We're poor.